Hi guys, I'm the Josie Half of the IOD Sisters, and I am going to be creating a flower pot in the Flow Blue tradition. Um, you've probably heard of Flow Blue. It's around the 1820s by Staffordshire Potters. It's beautiful. It's got that blue willow look, but it's soft and ethereal because of the glazing process, which blurred slightly during firing. I'm going to replicate that look on a terracotta pot. And I'm going to show you how you can do it too. It's super easy. I've got a printout here that I'm using as a loose guide to kind of make sure that I'm going in the right direction. Let's go ahead and get started. So first, you want to have a pot. I have a nice big uh, terracotta pot that I got for a great deal at a local uh, grocery store. Then you're going to want a brayer and a surface to put some of your paint on and brayer it. You're going to want some watered down chalk paint. It's going to vary. So, you know, do a whitewash, try one part paint to one part water, and then dilute it a little more until you get the consistency you want to continue layering it up and getting a nice wash. You're going to want a bright blue paint. I'm using Napoleonic Blue by Annie Sloan. And you are going to want a Spray bottle, little spritzer works great. Sanding block, and a little bit of olive type green so that we can do a little bit of moss action. And of course, your IOD decor stamps. This time we're using our beautiful new rose toile. It's absolutely gorgeous, you're gonna love it, and it's perfect for this project. And coffee. So this pot started out as regular terracotta, and this has a couple of layers of whitewash on it. All I did was layer it up. I didn't get video footage of it, sorry guys. I'm not always perfect at that. But I just really went on. You can see here the texture. I didn't try to get it perfect. In fact, a little bit of color play here and there is great. Some drip action. Y'all know we love some drip action. And just keep layering it up. Let it dry, layer up a little until you get it to where you want it. And of course, that doesn't have to be exactly the way I do it. See how you like it. If you want more of the terracotta showing through, go with it. What I've done here is I got a box that I had laying around to stabilize this so that I could keep it laying on its side without it rolling around, especially for the purpose of demonstrating. So we've got our whitewashed pot and it's given it a little bit of time to dry. Now we are going to do the fun part. I'm going to start with, we've got the spray bottle I talked about, it's just a little spritzer. And we are going to use this stamp at first. You can see it still has some paint on it while I was testing. So I am going to, I put a little bit of the paint on the surface I showed you and I'm getting my brayer loaded with it. Then I'm going to apply it to, in fact, let's take this off of here. Apply it to the stamp surface. Make sure I've got a even, not too sloppy, but you know, coated on there good and even, all right? And now I am going to wet this surface a little bit so that it doesn't suck it up right away because the first application of the stamp is going to be the blurry one. So we are going to go right in here and the nice thing, we're going what we call bare. We're not using anything to mount the stamp on. Many times you mount it on something, this time we're not. And you can find all of that information in our 101 video. So I've laid it down and I don't want to shift and I'm making my impression. Laying it down, not shifting, but using my hand to move it around. It's a little trickier with this um, compound curved surface. And since we are doing the blurred one, it's not as important to get it perfect. But that's just a general stamping rule that you want to lay it down and not shift while you're applying pressure. Now I have a moist shop towel that I got wet, squeezed it out. I'm going to go a little bit more on here. And before this dries, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to really 
blur it, okay? And get it all blurry. The reason I want it all blurry, and, and I could have just gone in and applied a blue wash without um, using a stamp, but if you look at the pictures, you'll see that the blur is around. It's really kind of um, limited to around the image. So I don't want it blurred everywhere. I don't want that blue blur going everywhere. I just want it, and using the stamp gives me the shape of where I want that blur to be, right? Go ahead and soften it a wee bit more. Soften my edges. Since terracotta and chalk paint are porous, it'll set up kind of quickly. So you do want to probably do one section at a time. So now we've got that all blurred out. You really don't see any form at all, which is kind of important because if you have the form and then you go back in again with the same design, you'll get that double vision look and you don't want that. You want this really blurred out. So now we're going to go in. That's not super wet. It's damp, but it's not super wet. And we are going to do a second impression. Let's give just a teeny spritz to keep the medium, in this case chalk paint, fluid on the surface. Let's go ahead, and it's not even important that you do it the same way you did before, okay? We're gonna lay it down, not shift, and then make sure that you're applying pressure to all the sections. Again, this compound curved surface is a little trickier than even the pots that are a straight walled conical. But you can do it, okay? So now you see you've got the blur and then you've got the impression over that. We'll go in and we'll repeat that over the whole pot. After that dries, I'll show you the next step. So as you can see, I'm almost done laying everything in and doing it the way I showed you, but I'm also doing a second way, which is kind of fun, and you can get another effect that's not quite as much of the blue blur, but still really fun, and let me show you what that is. That is to simply do a wet on wet. So you're going to, we're gonna do it right here. I'm going to spray this kind of liberally. Okay, so that's nice and wet. Then I'm going to apply onto this piece, right? And in the wet spot, I'm going to put it in there. And look at how soft and just a hint there. It, let me tilt this so it's facing the light more. And you can kind of see it. Isn't that beautiful? It's just, ah, just dreamy. Isn't that gorgeous? So there's that way too. And I'm gonna do a couple like that while you watch. I'm going to do this one here right here. Make sure it's nice and wet. You see, it's just kind of soft and you get a little bit of drippy run action, which I really love. And you can see that happen over here too. And you can see here again, the wet on wet and how lovely. Having the variation of the sharp and the blur is what gives this its charm. When it's all dry, I'm going to soften some of the more uh, intense spots to um, take them back a little bit. Let's put some of this awesome text in there. This is one of my favorites.
Let's put this text here and then the bigger one underneath. Now, if you want the run action, you gotta mist enough on there for it to run, of course. Now, this is tiny text, so it's not going to be sharp at all. And because it's tiny, you're gonna need to be that much more careful. Ooh, see how it's soft and blurred in some spots, but sharp in others, isn't that fun? Now, if you wanted to really just obliterate it and make it even softer while it's still moist, while it's still wet, go ahead and do that. And that'll soften it and break it up and kind of let it run a little bit more even. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and we're gonna dry it and then we're going to distress it back a little bit and add some moss. All right, now we've let this dry and I'm going to hit it with a fine sanding block. I also wanna have a damp shop cloth, just barely damp nearby, to wipe off any excess dust coming off of it. Now, remember that the purpose here and for this project we're not looking for sharp images. We're looking for um, eluding to the roses. It, as we remove it and let it get faded back, it becomes more and more elusive and romantic. And of course, has that um, salvaged look to it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the some of it, not all of it, we're gonna leave bits of it, but some of it we're going to hit with the sanding block and let the terracotta peep through. Maybe the spots that are heavier you can go in, but that's not even really the case because you want that variation in the depth. That just really adds to the authenticity. All right, we're gonna go ahead and wipe off the dust without putting too much pressure. You don't wanna, you know, smudge fresh work. Just wipe off your dust. I am not going to seal this. You could seal it, find an outdoor sealer, but I find that I like the milky look of chalk paint unsealed and it wears really nicely, just softly, um, softens and wears over time when exposed to the elements. You can see just a little bit of the terracotta peeking through nicely. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it pretty? I almost forgot we're going to put some moss on it. I'm going to put a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top. So what I'm going to do is we'll start right here and I'm going to get a little bit of my olive color on there. Get it kind of wet on my wet shop cloth. And then I'm going to wet this upper edge and just dab it on like that. You can either leave it like that or just soften it a bit. 
with a little twist and crumple. Okay, so you're just putting hints of that olive color in there. Now, I'm gonna go heavier along the bottom because that tends to be where the moss builds up. It kind of wicks up from the bottom, doesn't it? And I really like it. It looks like it's been sitting there for ages and just kind of gathering the minerals from the soil and looking authentically old. But you wanna go ahead and make sure that you're staying fluid so that you don't have any harsh lines, okay? Because moss tends to be, you know, soft and blended. Although, you know, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is a little um, of a sharper line. But we're gonna do soft. And you just go around and repeat. If you wanna bring it up further, you can. It's a nice complementary color to the blue that we've done too. And it's so easy. I find that the olive color is perfect for mossifying your planter. Isn't that pretty? There you go.